It is my honor today to introduce my friend and my brother, the Right Reverend Al Sharpton. I've known Uncle Al when he had long flowing hair, when he had beautiful Adidas jogging suits, and now he has finely tailored manicured suits. But let me tell you about the man underneath the suit that most impresses me. Some people wanted to be basketball players, football players, track stars, singers, songwriters. But this young man wanted to be a freedom fighter all of his life. And that's not a very popular or very high paying, it's certainly not a lucrative job, but it's something that gets stirred up on the inside of your soul where you wanna fight for freedom. And I thank God for the ministry, that he accepted Christ as an early age and he picked up his cross and he's been running with it ever since. And in this business of freedom fighting, you're gonna have a clean heart, but you're gonna get some dirty hands. And let me give you one clear example why God is so important in this. There was a fight that broke out in Decatur, Illinois, and a friend of ours in a chapter down in Decatur named Keith, he says, Reverend Jackson, Reverend Jackson, you have to come to Decatur. Naturally, we think Cleveland, Detroit, St. Louis, Los Angeles, Houston, but we had to go to Decatur. And my father, I can't hardly pin him down. He packed up, we're on our way to Decatur. I'm like, what happened? Fox News 24 seven saying there was a fight. These boys have been expelled. Nothing good can come of these children. See what the young Negro youth are doing. Not one child was injured, not one piece of blood, nothing. And the children were expelled from the school district with no alternative for education. My father said, I gotta go down and help. I wasn't on that committee, but I went down on a Saturday and took the ride. But I thank God that I've seen the Lord manifest his work and his will. And I'm glad I was in that room when Governor George Ryan was there and told the school district, you are wrong. You have to provide these children with an alternative education that you can't kick them out as teenagers so that they won't have work and they're gonna get someone pregnant and they're gonna have a shadow over their head and a scarlet letter on their forehead. Well, I'm proud to say today, there's a young man here today he went on to graduate from high school, went on to graduate from college, dedicated his life to the ministry, went on to run for the school board down in Decatur. He's the Reverend Courtney Carson. Stand up, Reverend Carson. I've seen what the good Lord can do. When our children get slain all over the country, there's a name that you can call. If you can't get Reverend Jesse Jackson on the second dial, there's another man you can call, and I thank God for him, the Reverend Al Sharpton. The Reverend's going east, Al's going west, the Reverend's going north, Al's going south. You can talk about them all you want. But you know, Reverend Al, the same people that said, if I was in slavery, I would have fought them. The same people that said, if I were in the 60s, I would have fought back. Well, if you're not in a fight today, you're the same one that would have been holding the plantation down and doing nothing to liberate people. This is the greatest hour of civil rights struggle we've ever seen. And I am proud to know a man who's not top down, a man that you know where he came from. On another day, we're gonna talk about brothers that are being parachuted down, that we don't know where they come from. This man comes bottom up, 12 years old, and he never stopped, a true freedom fighter. I need you to walk this way, Reverend Al. This man is keenly articulate, persuasively analytical, instinctively intelligent. He is none other than the Reverend Al Sharpton, a friend and brother, and the friend of the Reverend Jesse Jackson.